Well, welcome to the podcast uh, with Ultimate Athlete Concepts. Joseph Johnson here, uh, as always. And today I'm joined with uh, Dr. Peter Smolianov and Jed Smith, uh, co-authors of French Methodologies in High Performance and Health. Uh, it's a uh, book we released uh, last year um, and uh, gotten good reception on it. And it's, it's an area uh, that we don't get a lot of talk about really like you know what's going on in the fringe now in the world different places where they're using uh you know newer methodologies in in, in a range of areas so i don't want to uh kind of uh waste time uh, uh you know filling in on on on, on that stuff i want to stick to to the meat of this uh which is the approach that you guys took uh to this material and also uh, your backgrounds, you know, like how did this come together? Uh, because this is a unique idea, one that had not been done, uh, really. I didn't see that anywhere else. Um, and that was what my interest was in publishing the book. Um, so welcome, guys. Thank you very much for joining me on this. Uh, it's great to have both of you. Um, so let's start from, start from kind of the genesis of this. Jed, uh, you know, you and I met a number of years ago at the Central Virginia uh, Sports Seminar. Uh, and we chatted about a couple of different things in this area, and we both had a shared interest in uh, what the Soviet, uh, you know, sports system uh, had been doing during the Cold War, and then, you know, and then a little after that, too. Mm -hmm. um, what was the evolution of, of uh, for you coming to this process? What's your background, and how did you get to this place of wanting to do this book? Yeah, um, well, I, I, I guess my background, um, I'm a strength and conditioning coach. I've been a professional strength and conditioning coach now for about 25 years. Um, I've been at UNI going into my 16th season at University of Northern Iowa. Um, my, my job is interesting at University of Northern Iowa because I'm not uh, just a strength and conditioning coach. I instruct ex exercise sports science. We have an exercise science program where we develop professional strength and conditioning coaches. We have a grad program. Um, so I oversee uh, all the, the development of all the athletes, but then also the development of our students who are to be professional strength coaches. So um, I've been picking away at uh, my doc doctorate's degree at University of Northern Iowa um, here. It's going a little bit slower than I would have liked uh, as a strength and conditioning coach. You got to put a lot of hours in, but then on top of that, uh, Dr. Smolianov has a way of keeping you busy, and uh, we work on a lot of projects that actually slowed my process down, but I don't uh, regret it for a minute. Um, in fact, you know, Dr. Smolianov and I have, have developed a great friendship here, um, and it really started with, I was writing a paper on the high performance model uh, of sport management, and um, I had some questions. I shot out an email to, uh, and Dr. Smolianov is, is, a lot of what I was reading was written by Dr. Smolianov. So here I, I, uh, I'm like, yeah, I, I doubt this guy will even respond to me, but I looked through the internet, found out, you know, his email address and whatnot. I'm like, I'm going to ask him this question. I don't even remember what the question was. I, it was, it was a while ago. It really isn't that important, but I shot him, I shot him this email and, uh, and then, you know, Peter responds and says, hey, let's, let's Skype and, uh, you know, let's just Skype and we'll, we'll talk about it. So we Skype, we're kind of going over whatever the question I had was. And he goes, S send me your paper. Just send me the paper. I said, okay, well, I sent him, I email him uh, the paper and uh, he emails me back and he's, he really liked the paper. And he said, let's Skype again. There's some things here that I, I wasn't familiar with and I thought, I thought anything are very interesting. Let's Skype again. So we Skyped again and he's like, let's publish this. So that, that actual came out in the sport journal, uh, the article um, in 2015, I believe, uh, Peter. And that was our first uh, published work. And to be honest with you, what happened is, is we had some more meetings and it's like, let's put together a series of four articles. I don't know if you remember this, Peter, but I, 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 I actually was looking through my notes and we had four distinct articles that we were going to write. So we got on article number two 
And article number two, um, this is funny. And Peter, you probably don't know this part of this story at all, but you shamed me into uh, working really hard on article number two. So article number two, Peter keeps, you know, emailing me and he goes, hey, I'm, you know, I'm pretty far on this. I got this done. What do you got? And I was like, well, not, not that much, you know, and then I emailed him back and kept going back and forth. He's like, I'd like to see what you got. I'm like, I don't have that much. And, uh, you know, here he has about 125 pages, you know, uh, typed on article number two. And I got like a half a page. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't even know this. Right. And, uh, he goes, whatever you got, he goes, uh, I want to see it, whatever you got. And he's sent me, you know, his 125 pages. And I shoot him this like half page. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just like embarrassed. And so then uh, what ended up happening is, is I plugged away and hammered out my share and really got after it. Cause I was, I was like, you know, you know, I, I, got, to, I, I got to, you know, and, uh, and so, and then Peter's like, you know, we, we really got a book here. And so that's really how Article 2 ended up becoming a book. <laughs> yeah, and I was absolutely sure it's going to be a, a, a good book because they, the, the, this article that was uh, uh, in the sport journal, it, 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 it was the most read article, at least at my university, I was uh, the, uh, the most read author that year thanks to that article. So that, that article um, uh, was an overview from a big, big picture. And then from that big picture, we narrowed, the, we narrowed down the organizational uh, aspects of high performance management into, into a specific athlete-focused uh, athlete um, areas of general fitness and uh, sport-specific training. Um, and then. Uh, which includes strength training and uh, endurance, uh, uh, coordination, uh, uh, stretching, the psychological aspects of it, medical services, uh, and diet. And then, so these are the, the, the these these are what these are the more specific, more uh, narrow areas that we focused in the book, as opposed to uh, the article that outlined uh, the broad concept. Um, yeah, so th it was a very natural process. And, and and that that article really in its uh, high performance uh, what 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 is I can't remember the exact title high performance sport management um, yeah we looked at we looked at at how professional professional and Olympic sport uh, in in uh, uh, managed high performance uh, history of it and then how it came to the United States and specifically how it is now becoming part of. Uh, the university system in the United States. Mm -hmm. And that was the new thing that a lot of readers were very curious about. That's why it was so, um, so, so widely read all over the internet. Um, so that was, uh, that was the article. And then in the book, we outlined this key organizational points, but then we went more into, in, into details of all the new things that, uh, that, are, that have been happening. Uh, but what's what's uh, what's interesting is that the more we look at more things, the the more uh, the uh, we, the more we um, have to reconsider the well forgotten uh, well forgotten practices of nineteen um, seventies and nineteen eighties, which which were the times of the of the most um, uh, I'd say the most intense development of high performance in, in, in history so far, in history of the human um, um, uh, world because of the Cold War and because of the uh, intense uh, competition between uh, the West and the East mm -hmm. and, uh, and this uh, uh, sports uh, arm ray, uh, arms race was the, was the, um, the reason why, why the, the, the uh, uh, why, why high performance developed so fast and so uh, in in such a sophisticated uh, ways, uh, both in 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 the West, uh, particularly in the United States, and in the East, in the Soviet Union, uh, East Germany, and other um, Eastern Bloc countries. So um, 
Yeah. Yeah, and 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 I recommend Yosef to uh, any of the listeners out there to the, the article is High Performance Model of Sports Management. It's in the Sport Journal. If you, uh, it's open source, which is great, so anyone can pick it up and read it. Uh, you can get online and Google um, our names: Smith, Smolianov, and the High Performance Model of Sports Management, um, or High Performance Sport, and that initial article will pop up. And uh, it's a, uh, it's really, um, it was interesting because it, 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 it really painted a picture in a unique way that hadn't been done in the West before. Um, and it really got viral. It really did. Uh, in fact, I've had, uh, you know, calls with, um, you know, from military organizations, believe it or not, even the uh, Navy SEALs uh, on the management um, portion of that to Division I colleges. Um, fire departments, uh, you name it, on this, this uh, and I'm sure uh, Peter as well, um, it really took off because people were able to look in in a different way on how you organize and structure for elite high-level performance in a way that, that, that really uh, maybe hasn't been studied to that level in the U.S. at, at that particular time. I, I, think, I think it... Uh... Um, it could be some parts of of this um, uh, of this concept. They have been studied in 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 similar detail. But what's different about uh, this this work is that it uh, integrates uh, parts that in the past have been have been uh, studied um, separately. And mm -hmm. uh, that's, yeah, that's a better way to put it. Yeah. And, and so, so and but at the same time. Uh, this work skips the given, skips the common knowledge and the obvious, and we go beyond, straight away we go beyond uh, the known and uh, uh, many times discussed. We go in, into new things um, uh, um, that, that are being done now, and uh, and, th and this is what's what what is exciting about this work is that we um, uh, we, we provide um, kind of a build up. We provide the the, the, the kind of the icing uh, for for the for the cake that uh, all other traditional uh, uh, um, textbooks are are giving students and uh, sports scientists, sports scientists and the coaches, uh, uh, and we are. Uh, Spending all our time on on trying to detect the the, the new things that are emerging, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time we're trying to we're, we're doing it in a, in an integrated way so that you can see always can see the big picture and how these different elements fit within the big picture of preparing any athlete. Mm -hmm. So, so Peter, if you would give give a uh, a quick uh, a background. Uh, for for yourself too. So so I know that you're originally from uh, Moscow, I believe. Um, yeah. And yeah, you kind of have an interesting background because you you weren't like uh, during the 70s and 80s, like you mentioned. That was not the time of your um, uh, education. It was a little bit later, I believe. Uh, no 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 uh, no no. I was I was uh, I was. Uh, going through athlete development system and the uh, and the special okay. sports school and university studies uh well school studies and in 70s and in 80s so okay okay i, I, was, <laughs> I happen i happen to um, to experience the the very peak of the soviet right. uh, uh sport development um, as an athlete in sports school as an athlete so then and then you you uh, did you did you leave the Soviet Union like right when it fell apart or uh, was uh, it right <laughs> yes right when <laughs> right when it was destroyed I yeah. I left it <laughs> okay so because I I, I I would say I would say um, uh, it was it was time when uh, when so many uh, sports specialists from former um, Eastern Bloc have have been attracted to uh, Western countries right. um, uh, for two reasons. One is because uh, they could freely leave at that time and, they, and uh, 
they were invited uh, to contribute to development of uh, different uh, sport teams. Uh, I was, um, I went to Australia. Uh, Australia, as we know, uh, went to East Germany and other Eastern European countries to uh, to draw on their experiences, on their concepts, on 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 system structures, but also they employed a lot of um, sport specialists, coaches, coaches, and 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 sports scientists um, in preparation uh, for the Sydney Olympic Games, and they started doing this, uh, and they started doing this uh, uh, at the time of the previous Olympic Games, uh, or before, even before the uh, Atlanta Games in '96. Uh, they, they started to preparing for Sydney Olympic Games that were they took place in in um, in 2000. Yeah. So uh, so be, before uh, leading to 2000, for I was in Australia for 10 years, but I, I was I was part of the team um, the, uh, of coaches, sports scientists, and administrators who uh, prepared uh, some of the most successful Olympic Games from organizational part as the uh, um, it was pointed by International Olympic Committee, but also uh, preparing the actual uh, teams, teams of athletes, and it was done in, uh, um, in, in uh, uh, taking some of the best practices of both Western uh, and, and, and Eastern countries. So and, I was, and, I was, and a note there is uh, Australia really came on the scene and advanced yeah. very rapidly. Yeah with uh with that move to go and and recruit and bring in these uh soviet sports scientists and coaches and administrators yeah. to develop that structure um peter was part of that team and that's it's pretty amazing how australia evolved in the world of olympic sports it's kind of it's kind of the catapult uh a little bit i think because i you know as, as you know as you both know i'm familiar with a lot of the the former uh, Soviet Union coaches mm -hmm. and scientists and you know uh, Dr. Uh, Bereshansky you know he was good friends with Carmelo Bosco so he went to Rome uh, right after uh, you know the Cold War uh, was ended. Um, Dr. Bandarchuk left I think he originally went to Kuwait uh, and mm -hmm. then Portugal and then he came to Canada eventually and Dr. Vladimir Isurin went to the Wingate Institute in Israel he's still there um, so they yeah. scattered all over but Australia seemed to have a more keen, uh, keen uh, interest in the former Soviet scientists because it seemed like uh, a higher, you know, number went there. There's a couple, you know, different ones that I saw that that had had went to Australia. It seemed to kind of be like the catalyst for them because their uh, their science now I would say is disproportionately much more sophisticated than their population like you know oh, they, Australia is is phenomenal in it's way it's way right Absolutely. It, it's funny like you'll see you can see the you can see the Soviet influence there too because a lot of the things that they're looking at uh, or or that they're working in were were reminiscent of what you would have seen you know in the Soviet Union as it as it was coming along at that time so 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 Peter you you also gained uh, education outside of the Soviet Union too. So you you were educated there and outside the Soviet Union. So you've got a whole a different perspective. And I, I if you would, because uh, I I say this to people. I just did a podcast the other day where I talk about the 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 sports science system in the United States, and there isn't one. Is basically the the crux of it. It's not a system. Well, and, I, that, and I'll I'll tell you, it's a it's a lot less structured and that's the system that i grew up in and you know there's there, there's um very organized youth sports maybe not to the level of of the education of the coaches and so it's you got a lot of of, of youth that are jumping in and it's and it's not systemized and i grew up in that system and played yeah. uh, sports collegiately and i coach collegiately and um we have a lot of participation yeah. uh there's there's a the the work ethic and the drive there's there's some good things going maybe not as structured systemized and education based which we're evolving uh you know that's that's the movement we're, we're moving that direction moving, I, yeah i think we're moving kind of it's leaning right. in that direction now but like as as, as you know dr small and all you know there was 
you know, at the University of Kiev, there was like 700 scientists uh, <laughs> all working on this issue. And Moscow, I believe there was more from what I understood from Dr. Bereshinsky. So that tells you like, we, like here, it's not a national focus. Like we don't have like funding, if you will. We're not going out trying to get the best and brightest people to work in, you know, a specific sports field necessarily. You know, we don't have that. You know, and I, you know, I don't know if that would even be possible. It's because of the communist kind of regime. You were able to do things like that, where I don't know that you know that would be even be. You know, you could create something, but it wouldn't be on the on the. I don't think it could be. I don't think that the scale that the Soviets did could be replicated in a normal, you know, Western kind of you know situation or economy, and and that's different. Dr. Smolinov, could you comment on that, like? the differences between the way the Soviets looked at things and then the way that, uh, that you found in the United States? Well, it's, 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 uh, it's centralization versus decentralization. It is, it, yeah, it is uh, uh, d- uh, kind of top to bottom drive in, in, uh, <coughs> in the Soviet Union, now in China, as opposed to bottom up. So it's, it's a completely, completely different, completely different organizational system. That but and and, and, on, and the, that's... on the macro level, on the meso level, on the meso level, you can see quite uh, a lot of similarities. Yeah. And on the micro level, how athletes are managed, <laughs> there yeah. is a, uh, there is only <laughs> one optimal way. So <laughs> it's yeah. it's it's very very often it's, it's the same. Whoever gets gets it. Uh, right first, uh, you know, yeah. has better results, but the result the result is copied straight away <laughs> uh, uh, within several within several years. We know we know uh, all around the world how uh, Americans uh, are doing it very well, or, and then how, how Chinese or Russians are doing it. So, uh, so what we're doing in in our work, we are uh, revealing this. Uh, yeah, revealing that's, this, that's where reve- I was going to go. Yep. Uh, re- re- revealing this high performance methods that are that are currently only uh, used by elite athletes we're trying to bring it to general public yeah. to to go to, to uh, if not to recreational athletes to, to uh, at least to those who are uh, amateur um, uh, amateur athletes not not professional athletes and that's the that's the fun and that's probably the most satisfying and uh, exciting exciting thing of, uh, uh, for me in, in doing this work yeah and, and Yosef one benefit on uh, you know on the West and a capitalistic approach is there's a lot of fringe methodologies and that's the title of our book fringe methodologies in high performance sport um, and and health and uh, or performance and health the idea here is, there's always new evolutions that uh, come out and somebody has to try them. And in, uh, uh, in the West, there's always, you know, people are competing just, just like all over the world and they're trying to find out what is the best, what is the, what is the latest, what is something new that gives me a slight edge and a competitive edge. In the West, it's more than a competitive edge. There are many individuals who are, trying to evolve methodologies to try to make money. And so that's uh, in, in their it's, approach. It's, it's, yeah. 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 So it's, it's, you're going to, you're going to see new things evolving in both systems and all systems. And so what we're trying to do is capture um, regardless where you're from, if you're in China, uh, if you're, if you're, you know, somewhere in Europe, you know, it doesn't matter. United States, South America, Australia, what are people doing to evolve to get a competitive edge? What is best practice? Yeah. Is is and 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 what evidence supports that's the the use? Is it is it safe? Is there you know is is there merit to it? Yeah. And so really, what what Peter and I have found, we have some really a lot of common ground, and why we in, in, enjoy each other is we've both been in search myself is trying to get my athletes a competitive advantage ever since I started coaching and, and seeking knowledge before I started coaching as when I was an athlete going out and seeking what's going to help me have an advantage. Um, 
until now is just trying to help our athletes. Peter is in the, in the same world. And so when we started discussing, we've really, you know, it's brought me all over the world to just try to find, you know, those fringe methodologies to help, help the athletes I coach. And, and Peter in being a sports scientist and, and, you know, as and prior to that being an athlete and coach, the same thing. So we really, we have the same interests and we got together on uh, initially an article and article two became a book. Well, you know, I, here's what I like about what you guys did. And this is just from my personal point of view. Back in 1990, I didn't publish, but you know, you guys probably you know Rick Bruner and Ben Tabachnik, and they had did a little book they called Soviet Methods and Recovery or something like that, and it's not published anymore. Um, and it kind of elucidated a lot of the the cutting edge things that they had been doing over there at that time. It was like right at the end of the Cold War, you know, and it was kind of putting those things together. And it was interesting. I still get people emailing me about it to this day. They'd like to find that book. Here's what's interesting to me, or, or I think uh, what I like is, is this book is that 2.0. It's now taking that and say, okay, look, we got new stuff. You know, this, this has evolved. And what I like about what you guys are doing, and I think it's really important in the American or United States uh, market, is that, as you said, there's a lot of things out there. In, in, in a capitalist economy, you're probably going to see more things come to the market. Because everybody's trying to see what, you know, what might be profitable, you know, right. or be a good business. The problem is, and I, and I think that's good because it attracts a lot of participants. And then we get to, but then we got to sift through well, them. The and snake I like, oil. There's snake yeah, oil. So what I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what I like about it is, and I tell this to people all the time, the difference in the Soviet Union, there was no, like, a motivation for profit. So you really had to bring the real thing because... Yeah, you weren't getting rich. You were only validated by the hard science or, or yeah, by you know, it's, it's the output. Well, let, yeah, know, it was like, did it get, does yeah. it work or not? And they'd sniff out BS way faster yeah. for that reason, <laughs> right? Absolutely. Uh, so what I like about this book, uh, the French methodologies, is that this is your kind of your 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 litmus. Uh, if you want to call it litmus test or a BS detector. Absolutely. Here's things that we know are are. Th there's a lot of things that people call fringe. That's an easy word to use, right? But has it been reviewed? Has it been scrutinized by someone of any, you know, significance? Because here's, here's the reality. You and I both know, uh, and Peter, I, I'm sure you do too, is that there's things that pro teams are doing that are useless or, 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 or are not yeah, valuable, absolutely. right? Or colleges that are useless. And they think it's cutting edge. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't been scrutinized. So what I love about this is that you guys have gone out and looked at, is this researched? Is it peer reviewed? Has it been used in practice? Has it been validated in practice? You know what I mean? You're not, it's not just pie in the sky type of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's bleeding edge, but proven. And, and these are things that you can bring into your training uh, practice, if you will, now. You know, this is the real thing. So, because because the average consumer, even someone with a degree in the field, they're not sure. You know, is this really cutting edge? I don't know. You know, or am I being sold a bill of goods? We see this happen a lot with certain uh, different, uh, especially now with monitoring. You're starting to see a lot of technology stuff there, is, and you're like, does this work or not? I don't know. Or is it giving me what? I, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. I've I've observed a lot of people that have done that. You know, so if you guys would, either one of you pick up on this, uh, talk to me about how you you brought this to bear, like like, you know, deciding what was legitimate and what we well, probably. Well, I, I think have. I think it's important to outline the process. The process is the process starts uh, with uh, Jets coaches. He he he's, he he gathers coaches and. Uh, asks them to indicate what what are the methods that they've heard about or they they're starting to use and we are and we're making a list of them uh, every uh, uh, every year now twice a year and we try to search for all possible publications about these methods what has been done to ideally experimentally test these methods through scientific uh, research uh, or 
any other possible ways to to validate to validate the, the what what is being done mm -hmm. and and this is and then, then we and then we write up a section on 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 this new method and we then uh, rec rec uh, make our recommendations only based on objective uh, evidence of effectiveness uh, effectiveness of this method so this is a this is our process and again we are trying to cover by do, by by uh, moving moving ahead we're not going into a one specific area only whether it's your strength uh, enhancement or your endurance enhancement or it, it's your psychological, uh, uh, mental, um, mental uh, work. We are trying to cover all key key aspects. This is this is the unique, I think, um, a, a unique concept that we're trying to uh, trying to move ahead with the current most most um, innovative methods, validating them, but we're trying to ensure them across the key important areas of, of, of preparation yeah. pillars so, yeah. pill, the yeah. pillars the pillars that surround that in the high performance model you have the athlete which is the most important and right. what are the pillars that surround the development of that athlete so you know as far as you know strength training um nutrition uh the medical side recovery methods um, the psychology, what goes into that athlete, the, the key pillars that you can plug into the athlete that yeah. creates elite performance. And so what we're doing is because things are like, like you, like you say, uh, Joseph, that they, they, things are uh, popping up all the time. Some things are valid, some things are not. We're trying to sift through and then do the investigation of what 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 do we know you know what can we find out what is what has been done when we look at empirical evidence empirical evidence that's got to guide you as a practitioner and so what does the empirical evidence say um has has it been peer-reviewed uh research on it okay what about time tested so what is the history how long has this been around who's used it and what what level of success has been achieved using that method so there's multiple ways that empirical evidence can be used and we are sifting through that and again making the recommendations because you only have so much time as an athlete and as a coach and we want to create a good return on investment of time because you can spin your wheels and go all over the place and not really improve so these are the, the way why we put this together as a resource to help coaches manage managers and sports systems and athletes as well as just the general population who is it, it's infinite information online to what could, what could i do what could be unhealthy um healthy and what could actually i use to help myself yeah so the only subjectivity that uh, uh, i'm trying to bring to this to this uh, to this work is in the choice of the methods and in in my um, recollection of very well forgotten methods that have been used but have not been revealed yet for example we've been talking at our uh, most recent conference we've been talking about um, with a greek coach um, Christos with Christos, yeah. with, with Christos. and we, we've been talking about Alexeyev, who is the, 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 still the most uh, successful weightlifter uh, uh, in, in, in history of Olympic weightlifting, right, Jed? Yeah, yeah. Vasily Alexeyev, so, you, you're, you're very familiar with him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so he, uh, Christos reminded us in our conversation about his, his personal training methods with, with Alexeyev, uh, and I said, yes, I remember. I remember this was done. Plus, I remember something else. Like he would, uh, we remembered, um, for example, that he would uh, bring weights into the water, into the river, and and uh, lift weights. No one, no one, no one was shown this. No one, no one talked about it. No one was allowed to to see this. 
uh, uh, we are going to now uh, with Jeff hopefully uh, uh, experimentally uh, test this method again in in the new conditions. You, you uh, lifting lifting heavy weights in the water and see how how the how a new technology new knowledge could advance what was done in 1970s uh, 1980s uh, to to win most of olympic medals uh, that alexey that alexey was doing so this is just an example of, of where our, our um, subjectivity comes in, in, into this but we, we are we're trying to dig out some method methods that are new and well forgotten old and then we are testing them in the new conditions and then describing them in, in more detail well, this is interesting uh, for, for me guys because you know that my my background has been with what the soviets did in, starting in 1994 so it's been 26 years for me uh in, in in this area of study in this and being around a lot of the great soviet scientists and coaches and uh you know what i what i've uh, noticed is that when the, where the soviets left off in 1990 91 is still probably 30 years ahead of where we might be at in, in, in some senses. Because there's a lot of things that the Soviets were doing that we still haven't adopted or we haven't, we don't have knowledge of. You know, there's a lot of different things that they used in different areas. And, and one of the things I think that, that it would also be interesting for the listener and the reader of the book is that, you know, at that time, the Soviets would have a group of scientists around the athlete. So he, he had a specialist in each area, bio, uh, his coach, then a biomechanist, you know, someone else may be a specialist in nutrition, a psychology expert, uh, all of the different things were all around that athlete. And, and so the coach could go to each one of those specialists and say, hey, here's what the, the, the issue is. What do we do about it? So I, I'll give you a quick anecdote, like Dr. Bandarchuk, you know, with his hammer throwers, he said if he had a problem in biomechanics, he would go talk to Dr. Donskoy and say, okay, here's what the issue is. What do we do with this? And it was kind of a, a really great model for, you know, the centralized, the coach who's very competent. He has a PhD. He's not a, you know, he's not a, a, an amateur. And, but he's going to experts in their narrow areas to kind of bring all of that information to bear in the in the improvement of that one athlete mm -hmm. and i think like your, your this project is kind of reminiscent of that it's you know where you're looking at all of what's the bleeding edge in each area and let's bring them all together under one roof in a validated way that can be used by the same athlete so that he ensures you know uh, he's on the cutting edge in every area not just one area but and all you, of yeah. that's yeah that's the i think the, yeah i think the most uh, i think the most important concept uh athlete centered uh, concept that was in play put in place in in uh, eastern uh, bloc countries during during the cold war that spreads around the world now and and beyond sport it it it, it it's going beyond sport it goes into business and many other areas um, of, of our socioeconomic and uh, technical development is this uh, group of multi-science experts yes. that are involved in the development of a particular phenomenon for, spe for specific objectives, winning objectives and health objectives were the key objectives where every team in, um, in, in the Soviet Union, every team um, had a had a team had a um, group of um, um, there was a medical doctor by first of all um, then sports scientist if it's a, if, if there's a technical sport there is an engineer uh, usually part of this part of this group and th this group of uh, um, th they also had a, um, a still a, a unique um, a uh, role uh, called doctor coach it, it it it's 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 almost dead now it's di it disappeared uh, from uh, it, it, uh, all over the world it was it was in place in, in the soviet union this this uh, this education was provided in in estonia in one of the oldest 
uh, universities in Europe, Tartu, University of Tartu in, yeah. in Estonia, in Estonia. And um, you would receive a degree uh, as a general doctor, as a physician, but also uh, a sports specific coach. So I was invited um, to, to go there for some, uh, it's, it's a pity I didn't go. Um, there was a specialization in fencing, even in modern pentathlon. In other words, you would get a degree as a, as a, as a doctor and at the same as a coach specifically in modern pentathlon. So you would study, uh, you would study medical science, but also uh, uh, spe sports specific disciplines of, of sports science and pedagogy in order to service them. Uh, a, a, a team uh, of, of athletes in this specific sport. Now you would you would you would then as a, as a, as, a, as a specialist uh, in 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 medicine and in in, in sports specific uh, coaching and science you would draw into this team you would attract uh, sp different specialists and you would be uh, you would be using an engineer or a medical special medical expert in order to advance the team and provide uh, and extend prolong competitive career of every team member keeping in keeping in mind that so much has already been invested in in the athlete who is on the team so every 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 additional year of of competing is huge return on investment that that and and it's and it's and it's a huge loss if you if you lose an athlete because of the injury or mm -hmm. uh, so that 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 concept is probably the most useful concept that we are using because basically we are ensuring that that, that all aspects of athlete development are included in in in, in our work and it's continuously advanced but it's but this this very concept is adopted now is being adopted now by not only sport industries even though this sport sport schools like IMG academies and and uh, athletic departments of of colleges and universities are also using the the same uh, the same concept right mm -hmm. yeah yeah and you're seeing, you're seeing that's what we're seeing that a little bit replicated at the collegiate level now and at the uh, pro level. You're starting to see more of that. So, so now you'll see on a uh, on teams they they typically. I, I have uh, a lot of different colleagues and friends who work in professional sports, and and you know they'll have, uh, you know, the medical doctor not on the level of what you're talking about, but they'll have one in orthopedic. Mm -hmm. They have a someone who's a specialist in psychology. They have a team nutritionist. You know they have the the positions available. I think the only thing that's different is they don't have the high technical knowledge that the Soviets had in their separate areas. I think that's the only place where we're lacking. But the model is there. You know the approach mm -hmm. is you're starting mm -hmm. to see it more now. Well, we took uh, it, yeah. we took it at another level at at UNI where our uh, strength and conditioning staff and our athletic training staff is under the exercise science department. So that's that's unique in that we use all of our professors to really try to incorporate and employ that high performance model so that we use the expertise of the multiple facets to apply to the athletes, which is kind of what we wrote about in uh, in our first article. So well, that, 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 that's what I that's what I really I, I really appreciate about it. So. Um, I want to just before we sign off because I don't you know we don't want to take yeah. too long but I want to uh, just kind of briefly uh, just highlight the sections and the areas that that are going to go into and you guys are already working on a second edition mm -hmm. of this uh, updating the material but I'm going to just kind of give people a little bit of a, uh, a plug a plug with that stuff there too and you have to forgive me because my eyesight's going so. Um, in the book, by the way, just for, for those who haven't seen it, this is this is the book, the Fringe Methodologies book uh, that we put out last year together. And in, in the book, uh, you know, there's an outline, and then you guys go over, uh, you know, like you said, the, the general fitness stuff, strength training, um, you, uh, you talk about periodization, uh, high altitude training, a lot of those different ideas, a lot of things in the, in the psychological area, like the 
autogenic training, uh, breathing and voice exercises, mindfulness are some of the sections there. Uh, medical stuff uh, in the area of, uh, in the uh, more Eastern kind of oriented uh, approaches there, uh, different things in the area of um, uh, yoga, uh, uh, prehab, rehab, cupping, injury prevention with uh, uh, exercise and restoration. And uh, you go through the nutrition stuff, a lot of recovery methods. Um, and then, uh, and then kind of uh, you guys bring it back around. You talk about uh, actually some uh, nu nutrient substances as well uh, beyond just diet, but, you know, different uh, bioactive substances that could be good. Uh, you know, what we'd call supplements here, maybe uh, mm -hmm. uh, ergogenics. Uh, and then you guys talk a little bit about uh, lifestyle stuff as well um, and, and kind of go through all those different areas. Uh, it's very fascinating because it, it, it'll bring to bear things that a lot of people didn't know existed would be my guess you know uh and, or if they did i like for me like i, I might have known they existed but i didn't know enough details about them like you know maybe you'd heard about it but you don't know is it valid you know i don't know anybody who's done it yet that kind of thing because you know as a coach you kind of like to be able to reference someone who's done it or, or or looked into it you know well enough so you and you guys are moving beyond what you already had in this book you're already looking at the second edition working on that um, and, and, and the material in this one is, you know, is really uh, great, valuable, and very, very applicable to guys who are in the field at the pro, collegiate, and even at the high school level. Mm -hmm. You know, they can take things from that as well and, and, and apply it uh, to their situation, um, you know, in all three settings, I believe, and, and also the Olympic setting as well. And it never ends, uh, Yosef, because it, it, things oh, evolve every single day. And so that's, uh, you know, uh, Peter and I have laughed about this before. Uh, we will never end with this project because um, it's just going to keep coming and we're going to just keep working on it. We, we <laughs> have to work until we die. Well, as long as, as long as sports holds the place that it does, and it seems to be getting larger, mm -hmm. you know, you look at uh, the TV contracts, uh, that the, the, the different, uh, you know, college and, and, and pros are signing, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. It looks no. like it's just, it's growing, I, I dare say, almost exponentially, if, if, if that's even possible. Uh, it, it's, it's got such a large importance, in the, especially in the United States culture, that, yeah, you guys are going to be uh, busier, <laughs> busier than you might expect because it's not good. And, and, and there's always something like, you know, there, there's a lot of different methods. I mean, like, uh, uh, you know, I look, you know, I'm kind of actively kind of taking stock of what's out there. And I'm always amazed at the new things that are on the market. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just one right after the other. Uh, and, and, and this is a great guide. I, I'd almost dare say a subtitle to this is, you know, here's your BS guide so you know what not to you, you know what not to do and what to what do. What not to do? Here, yeah. I'm going to say, I, I like, uh, I'm going to save you some time, book. Yeah, no, I no. think if you will, maybe that, 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 that it's that kind of an idea, a manual, so you don't waste your time. Because I'll tell you, I get calls from people, you know, from all over the country, uh, all over the world, really, and they'll ask me about different things, and I, and I'll tell them, don't waste your time with that. That's already, you know, and I used to do that when I was younger with with my mentor, Doctor Yeses. I'd ask him, he goes. No, that's that's nonsense. He said they tried that 40 years ago. It didn't work. So I'll just save you the time. And uh, so, you know, I appreciate uh, that. And I know other people do, too. So I, I'm really looking forward with you guys to going through each chapter. So then that's kind of what we want to do here is go through a series. And we're going to go through all of the different subject matter with both of you in detail, some of the ideas, and then also where are we going with it? Because I think that's even more interesting is where are you guys going with it? What's up, what's the next thing? What are we looking at that we want to, uh, how we want to evolve this to? So do you guys have any parting thoughts on, on that uh, as, as we go to the next step? No, I'm excited to, I'm excited to explore a little bit and see where we go. What, my thought on this is to get a little bit more of a personal side to it. Um, where, you know, we fill folks in, you know, maybe some stories of athletes um, and experiences that, uh, that we know that can go hand in hand with the knowledge and, and the science that, that we 
bring in the book. And, and, and I should say, you know, I have another small podcast that we do. It's called Cut the Check Podcast, right? And, and basically the idea is, is what I tell people is, you know, the, whatever you're doing with the athlete, the aim should always be to be able to get the, the check cut. If he's a professional, it's a paycheck. If he's collegiate, it's a scholarship. If he's an Olympian, it's a medal. But there has to be this tangible result, right? Otherwise, we're spinning our wheels. And, and, and that's – I think that's the – will be the focus for us is how did this translate into something that the athlete needed? Like what his goal, whatever it was to get the scholarship, to get drafted, you know, whatever the case is, how did that affect that? And because that's really all that matters. Uh, you know, we got to, uh, sometimes uh, I think in the field, sometimes things get off in different directions and they, and we, they don't come back to the main thing, which is the athlete has to perform better at the thing that they perform at. That's all that matters. Everything else, you know, might be interesting yeah. to talk about, but it doesn't matter, you know, and I, and that's what I love. So we're going to be able to take these concepts that you guys lay out and, and talk about how did they actually affect the athlete's, you know, performance in the area that he performs, what happened. And that, to me, that's what I really love, the, the, you know, is, is to hear from an experienced coach. What did you do with, with your athlete that, that you really saw a great result with? And tell me how you did it. Cause that, that's, and I'm all ears. Cause I want to hear what you did. Uh, you know, that, that was valuable. So I'm going to be like listening just like anybody else. Cause I'd, I'd love to hear the anecdotes as well and see how I can apply some of those situations to some of the athletes that I work with as well. So I look, for, look forward to, I, I appreciate both of your time and I'm looking forward to doing this. Now this is being recorded during the, uh, the, the COVID-19 uh, quarantine. So we're hoping to get more of these done here because, <laughs> we're all kind of locked down so so we're going to be able to get these knocked out uh not being on our normal schedule so uh we look forward to getting these out to you guys uh, uh soon one right after the other and and peter and jed i appreciate both of you taking the time to talk to me uh, about this and I'm, I'm really excited and looking forward to taking this uh uh to the next step all right thanks yosef thank, thank you so thank much you. Yep, thank you, you. Have a great night thank yep. you bye-bye thank you bye